Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn and in today's video I am going to be creating a Christmas scene center picture window with the Merry Mice. The stamp sets that I'll be using today is the Merry Mice. I'm using some presents from the Joy to All stamp set. One of the mice from Dandy Day and also there is one from Crazy Antics but I didn't end up using it and multiple trees from the Winter Skies stamp set. My images are stamped in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink which is great for Copic coloring and stamped on 80 pound white cardstock. I'm only going to be coloring one tree on screen here for you and a lot of times when I'm coloring my trees I flip my cardstock upside down so I can get the flicks for the trees and give it more of a realistic look. For the trees I used G28, G07, and YG06 and then just added two different shades of brown for the tree trunks. Now I apologize I misplaced my note that says all the different color combinations that I used for my Copic markers. Some of them I do know offhand, but I apologize I won't have them all. So I did go ahead and start coloring my mice. Now this one I'm coloring twice because one of my markers started to run out of ink and I needed to stop filming to refill it. So I went back over it to just kind of help the blend a little bit more. For the mice I am using E29, E25, E23, and E30. I will use that same color combination for all four of the mice, but like I said, the one sitting down there, I ended up not using that one. When I am applying my shadows, I am looking at the image and seeing which direction they're facing. So if they're facing to the left, I'm gonna put my darkest color on the right and vice versa. After I colored in their bellies and ears, I'm gonna color this cute little stool with just two shades of brown. And then I'll move on to Christmas presents. And I always struggle with Christmas presents because I'm always trying to think of different color combinations. And I finally landed on one that works well for me. And that is coloring all of the ribbon in yellow to kind of give it the appearance of gold. Now, another thing I also like to do with presents is actually just add a little bit of light gray to them to make them look white. But for this one, I went with kind of a red tone, starting with RV14, which is kind of a pink. But then I'm going to bring in some darker colors to help make that look like red presents with gold ribbon. Another reason that I like using the yellow for the ribbon and even a light gray for the presents is then I know it's going to match any scene that I create in case I don't already have that planned out. I finished coloring the remaining trees off screen. Once it's all colored, I'm going to line up the coordinating dies for each of the image, hold it in place with low tack tape, and then run these through my die cut machine. And I'm going to set this off on the side to work on my card. I'm cutting the main panel from the center picture window from 80 pound white cardstock. Then I'm taking the actual center picture window piece and I die cut that from some dark wood grain cardstock. I'll use this oval opening, line up the open line in the middle of the die with the scored line in the middle of that wood grain cardstock. And I'll show you that piece in just a moment. So I have my pieces all die cut out and ready to use. I'm taking my main panel piece, this has a scored line right down the middle, and I'm going to be ink blending some Distress Oxides on this with a blending tool. I started with a salvaged patina, and then I flipped this, and on the other side I am adding some Blueprint Sketch, and now I'm coming in with a Villainous Potion, which was is one of my new favorite colors to ink blend with. It is a great dark purple, but it also just really adds intensity to my winter skies. To help smooth out the transition, I'm going to go back between the rest of the colors with the blueprint sketch and salvaged patina, doing circular motions and once in a while just going straight across the cardstock. An easy way to create kind of a snowy background is just taking a little bit of water, spritzing it onto your work surface. I'm going to pick it up with a paintbrush and just flick this all over my background because I have so much ink on here and those dark colors, you're really going to see those water spots to give the illusion of snowfall. Now for the rest of our components for our center, center picture window. So there's my ink blended panel with the scored line in the middle. I have another piece that I die cut from some light wood grain cardstock. This is going to be in the inside of our picture window. It's scored in the middle and two flaps on the side. This is that dark wood grain that I die cut the center out of. 
I have the two flaps on the sides and that center scored line that I folded all of those edges and reinforced with a bone folder. And then I also have a piece of pattern paper here that I trimmed to the same size as the front of my center picture window piece. That is just going to be the background of my Christmas scene. I also have white cardstock that I die cut from a stitched hillside die that I trimmed out so it's going to go on each side and I trimmed it out a little longer than what was needed to make sure that you're not seeing those edges of the snowy hills. So I took my tape runner and added that to the back of my pattern paper, added that right to the front and then folded. I tried die cutting that with a specialty die that's included in the center picture window but when I creased it, it ripped my pattern paper because it's thinner than cardstock. So I just added it straight to the background and then folded it and it worked out great. Now I'm adding thin double-sided tape to each of the flaps on my center picture window and also to this inside piece. So there's two little flaps here that I am adding that double-sided tape to. I'm going to remove the backing on just one side of my center picture window and then I'm going to take some liquid glue. Now the reason I'm using liquid glue with this is this is gonna give me a little bit of wiggle room. They're both super strong adhesives, but by having it be a liquid glue there, I have a little bit of room in case I misplace this. So I'm lining up that scored line of my center picture window with the scored line of my base. Once that's lined up, that one flap I fold it in and I'm going to press down. Now I'm gonna hold it here for I didn't count, maybe 30 seconds or so, just to make sure that that liquid glue is really secured because I don't want this popping up on me as I'm working on it. I'm gonna repeat those same steps with this smaller piece. This piece is, I wanted to give the illusion of floor for my Christmas scene. So once again, removed that uh, backing of the double-sided adhesive, added some liquid glue. I'm gonna match up the scored lines of the base to that smaller piece with the flap. I'm gonna fold the flap under and then hold that down to really adhere that. Now I'm going to fold these pieces, both of them, in half with the other flap sticking up. So we'll fold the small piece in half, my flap is sticking up there, and then the same thing for that front center picture window piece. So my flaps are both facing up. I'm gonna make sure that they're folded and flush with the bottom of my base, and then add that liquid glue and now I can just close the other side of my panel. And I'll just hold that down for a little bit or you can put something heavy on it like your misty tool or maybe some blocks just to hold that down for a little bit and make sure it's really secure. So everything is stuck down, nothing is popping up and I'm ready to start decorating the inside of this. Now I'm gonna bring in all of my critters and images that I colored and die cut out. I also did go back off screen and cut out, or color and cut out some ornaments and the star for the top of the tree. My idea for this whole scene was I wanted it to look like these little mice in maybe a tree trunk and they're doing their own Christmas thing with presents and decorating the tree. That was my thought to this scene. Now some of these images probably could have been adhered together before I try and place them in. Tweezers are a huge, huge help to get it inside of that small little area. So just a little bit of finagling in there, just kind of move it around, make sure nothing is in the way of that crease that's in the middle. So I went through, I added my Christmas tree and my little mouse on the stool. And that's when I realized I didn't have anything for him to be doing. So I had to go back and color some ornaments to make it look like he's decorating his tree. I added my other trees on each side of the panel with some liquid glue to complete my snowy scene. And then I have that one sitting mouse. I really had thought of putting him in there, but I thought it was just getting too full. I didn't want to overdo my scene. Sometimes I tend to overthink things. So I'll just save him for another project. So I just finished off by adding this little mouse by the tree where it's going to look like he's hanging an ornament. So you'll notice in just a moment that my tree is going to be decorated and I'll have a star on top of my tree as well. So that pretty much finishes up the inside of my card, but now I need to decorate the front of my card. And to do that, I am going to use some of that red and white striped paper from the Let It Shine paper pack, die cutting it from that main base panel from the center picture window. So it's the same size as my base. I'm gonna fold this in half, and I'm gonna line this up with my base. Now, sometimes when you fold it, things don't always measure the same, especially since I have a lot going on in the inside. So I added a lot of tape runner 
to my pattern paper and I'm actually going to match the front side first or this left side first. I want to make sure that that is completely covered. If I'm a little off on the back of my center picture window, I'm okay with that. Most people aren't going to really notice if I have a little bit of white cardstock showing. But this, for the most part, covers any ink blending that may have seeped through to the other side. To decorate the front of it, I die cut a piece of cardstock and ink blended it with the same colors that I used in the inside. And I had some leftover trees, so I added that to the front and also this cute little North Pole sign from Penguin Party stamp set that I believe I stamped Merry Christmas on. In hindsight, I really should have left the Christmas sign white because of my dark coloring, because I tend to color really dark. Uh, you can't see the Merry Christmas very well, but I still think it's a super cute sign. Now, any personal message you can add either to the inside or on the back. You could die cut out or just trim out a piece of white cardstock to add to the back of this and then write your personal Christmas message. So I really love these center picture windows because not only are they just super adorable and a really unique card, but they're great to put on display. You can stand them up on your counter or wherever you display your Christmas cards. And they also fold up nice to mail in a regular A2 size envelope. I hope this card has inspired you. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.